Hello everyone, this video is about Hematology 2 where we will be discussing abnormalities about the blood cells. The blood cells include red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. But in this video, we will only be talking about the white blood cell abnormalities and disorders. This video serves as an overview for the different leukocyte or white blood cell abnormalities that may be seen and the disorders that they are related to. There are different leukocyte abnormalities or white blood cell anomalies, and they are as follows. We have the smudge cell, hypersegmented cell, Pelger-Hewitt anomaly, Jordan's anomaly, TART cell, LE cell, Hairy cell, Raider cell, Downy cell, and the pycnotic cell, and all of these will be discussed briefly. Let's start with the smudge cell, also known as the basket cell. These cells are ruptured white blood cells, leaving their nucleus to be free. They can be pathologic and non-pathologic. A non-pathologic cause may be during smearing. So smudge cells are produced if there is heavy pressure on the spreader slide. A pathologic cause of a smudge cell or a basket cell may be due to leukemia. So this is how a basket cell looks like. So it looks like this is the basket with the handle and it's also called a smudge cell because it looks like a smudged cell. The second anomaly is the twinning deformity where the neutrophil is with a diploid nuclei. This is the white blood cell and this is one nucleus and another nucleus. This is considered as a hypersegmentation of a neutrophil and this may also be seen in pernicious anemia. The next type of cell is Jordan's anomaly, also known as foamy cell. Description of this cell is that the cytoplasm has holes or vacuoles. As you see in the picture, the cytoplasm appears to have holes, which are clear spaces, or also known as vacuoles. It is called a foamy cell because the cytoplasm with vacuoles gives a foamy appearance. This happens if a two hour old oxalated specimen is used to make a smear. This may be seen in leukemia or infection or in chemical poisoning. Another anomaly is the TART cell. A TART cell is usually a monocyte with an engulfed foreign nucleus. So this is a TART cell, this is the nucleus, and this is the engulfed nucleus of a neutrophil. This is usually seen in drug sensitivity, but most of the time this has no real diagnostic value. The important thing to remember is that the TART cell should not be mistaken for an LE cell, which is a very important cell. The LE cell is a phagocyte but usually a neutrophil with an engulfed nuclear material of a destroyed cell. This is the nuclear material which has been pushed to the side and this is usually coated by antibodies and we call this engulfed nuclear material with antibodies as LE body. Seeing an LE cell is characteristic of a condition called SLE or systemic lupus erythematosus. The next anomaly is the drumstick or the bar body. Now it is a drumstick shaped nuclear appendage on neutrophils. This is the nuclear appendage as seen attached to the nucleus of neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. This is considered as a sex chromatin. It represents the condensed chromatin of the inactivated second X of females. So these chromatin drumstick or bar bodies may only be seen in females. This can be seen in 1 to 8% of neutrophils of females. So not all neutrophils of females will have a drumstick body. If a drumstick body is found in a male, it is most likely that this person has the Klinefelter syndrome. 
Before we continue with the different WBC anomalies, let's first have an overview of the different leukocyte disorders so we can categorize the remaining WBC anomalies according to these disorders. So we have white blood cell disorders and we can generally categorize them into two. It can be quantitative or qualitative. Quantitative can be categorized again into two, which is reactive or non-malignant and non-reactive or malignant. Reactive disorders may give an increased disorder or a decreased disorder. Non-reactive or malignant disorders are divided into myeloproliferative diseases and lymphoproliferative diseases. For the qualitative branch, it can be caused with three conditions with morphologic abnormalities or with normal morphology and those with morphologic changes. We will give a brief discussion on each. Let's first start with the quantitative and non-malignant leukocyte disorders. So as we have mentioned earlier, it can either be an increase or a decrease. These are the different conditions that show an increased quantitative non-malignant leukocyte disorder. So we have the phileas, neutrophilia, lymphocytosis, eosinophilia, basophilia, and monocytosis for increased white blood cells. For decreased white blood cells, we have the penias, neutropenia for a decreased neutrophil count, lymphocytopenia for a decreased lymphocyte count, eosinopenia, basopenia, and monocytopenia. To give different examples of each, for neutrophilia, one cause may be bacterial infection or trauma. Lymphocytosis or an increase in lymphocytes may be because of a viral infection. Eosinophils increase in parasitic infection. Basophilia may increase in conditions like chronic myelogenous leukemia and allergies, while monocytosis may increase during inflammation and infection. There can be a drop of neutrophils caused by medication or other immune-mediated causes. A decrease in lymphocytes may be seen in conditions like acquired immune deficiency syndrome and some carcinomas. Eosinopenia may be seen in marrow hypoplasia. Basopenia may be seen in cases of stress and exposure to radiation, while monocytopenia may be seen in patients undergoing hemodialysis or steroid therapy. All of these are just some examples that may cause the quantitative non-malignant leukocyte disorders. Let's now go to the second category, which is quantitative and malignant. This can be divided into two, which is myeloproliferative disease and lymphoproliferative diseases. Myeloproliferative diseases may be acute myelocytic leukemia, or AML, chronic myelogenous leukemia, or CML, polycythemia vera, and essential thrombocytosis. These are the white blood cells red blood cells, and the platelets. Lymphoproliferative diseases are more on the lymphocytes. They are also classified into lymphomas and plasma cell leukemia. The hour rods are bodies that may be seen in a malignant myeloproliferative disease. These are rod-like bodies that can stain reddish purple as seen in this picture. The rods that may be seen in multiple number are the hour rods. Hour rods may also be seen in acute myelocytic leukemia. For this picture, there is a very small hour rod at the side. A radar cell is a cell that may be seen in a quantitative malignant lymphoproliferative disease, specifically CLL or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Radar cells are lymphocytes with pseudolobulations. This is a radar cell. Normally, lymphocytes only have 
one nucleus with no lobulations. But if the nucleus of a cell of a lymphocyte has lobulations like this one resembling a clover leaf, then this may be considered as a radar cell. The next WBC anomaly is the hairy cell, and the hairy cell is seen in hairy cell leukemia. It is called hairy cell because of its characteristic. The cytoplasm has irregular and gray-blue hair-like projections as seen in this picture. This is the cytoplasm with hair-like projections extending outwards. Hairy cells, when stained with tartrate-resistant acid phosphatase, show a red granular cytoplasmic staining. Let's now go on with the next leukocyte disorder category, which is the qualitative disorders. And qualitative is divided into three characteristics, leukocyte disorders with morphologic abnormality or leukocyte disorders with normal morphology, and those leukocyte qualitative disorders with morphologic changes. For morphologic abnormality presence, examples would be the Pelder Hewitt anomaly, neutrophil segment hypersegmentation, alder riley anomaly, Chediak-Higashi syndrome, and May-Heglin anomaly. In Pelger-Hewitt anomaly, there is a failure of the neutrophil to segment properly. That's why it is only bilobed, connected by a segment that makes it look like a dumbbell-shaped nucleus. This is seen in leukemia. Specifically, it is mostly seen in infectious mononucleosis. In hypersegmented neutrophils, also known as macropolycytes, these are neutrophils with 6 to 10 lobes. So in this picture, this neutrophil has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 lobes. So this is now considered as a hypersegmented neutrophil. And usually, this type of neutrophil will be seen in cases of pernicious anemia. The next white blood cell anomaly is the alder riley bodies. These are white blood cells with large, coarse, dark purple azurophilic granules. These are white blood cells with alder riley bodies with heavy granulation and deep purple to lilac granules. These cells are seen in alder riley anomaly or in mucopolysaccharide storage diseases, or in Hurler's or Hunter's syndrome. The patients of Hurler's or Hunter's syndrome usually have the characteristic gargoylism or gar gargoyle features. Another WBC anomaly is the Chediak-Higashi granules. These are very large red or blue granules in the cytoplasm. These are the large granules seen around the cytoplasm of a WBC. White blood cells with Chediak-Higashi granules have a decreased phagocytic activity, and these are seen in Chediak-Higashi syndrome. The next white blood cell anomaly is known as the May-Heglin anomaly. The May-Heglin anomaly looks like dola bodies. This is a May-Heglin anomaly. And if only looked by itself, it will look like a dola body. So how do we find out if it's Mayheglin or a dola body? A Mayheglin anomaly will appear in a triad, a triad of thrombocytopenia, giant platelets, and the inclusion body, which is the Mayheglin anomaly. So in the presence of a giant platelet and the dola looking like body, we can now say that this is a Mayheglin anomaly. For the second characteristic, which is normal morphology, we have the chronic granulomatous disease and the leukocyte adhesion disorders. The last of the leukocyte disorders under qualitative is the morphologic changes present in the leukocyte disorder. Examples would be toxic granulation, dola bodies, cytoplasmic vacuolation, and infectious mononucleosis. The next type of WBC anomaly is called the toxic granulation. So these are neutrophils with blue-black cytoplasmic granules. These are the counterparts of basophils because they look like basophils. 
but in fact, these are neutrophils. And these may be seen in conditions like acute infection, burns, or drug poisoning. The next WBC anomaly is the dolla bodies. These are small, pale blue, and peripherally located bodies at the cytoplasm. These are actually remnants of the ribosome and the endoplasmic reticulum. These may be seen in severe infections and severe burn. And these may look like may heglin anomalies. The difference is the platelets are not giant. The last WBC anomaly to be discussed is the downy cell. Now these are lymphocytes that have been transformed or have been atypically stimulated. We can see these in infectious mononucleosis with a characteristic ballerina skirt cell. So this is a downy cell. Because of the presence of the cytoplasm, it looks like you are looking at a ballerina from a top view. That's why it has the ballerina skirt cell name. That ends this video overview about the different leukocyte abnormalities and disorders. Again, this is just an overview. The disorders are not discussed in detail. Comment down below which disorder you would like to be emphasized. And watch the other two videos about the different abnormalities and disorders for red blood cells and platelet count. Thank you for watching.